Good day, everybody, and welcome to this week's very special edition of CAW Thursday Night Anarchy. I'm your lead commentator, the wild one, Bruce Northaway. And, well, if you haven't noticed that the ring pyrotechnics isn't happening, is because I'm not using universe mode today because it's such a special edition. Tonight, all matches are going to be decided with this. The Anarchy Wheel of Deal. As you can see, there are 15... No, you're not late. You just showed up on time, Hannah. As you can see, there are 15 matches on this wheel. And once the wheel lands on wherever it's going to land, that's what the next match is going to be. So, let's see what the first match is going to be. And it looks like the first match is going to be a ladder match. So the ring crew is just running down to ringside now and setting up the ladders. And hanging something above the ring to go for. So I reckon this should be a... Something different, a triple threat ladder match. Now just setting up the match now. Them three are gonna start off. God's sake. Now, normally I have about eight matches, but because we have no idea how long these special matches will go for, we'll just go around the two hour mark, then we'll cut out from there. Could have extra matches, could have least matches, just that's the way we're going to do it tonight. And if you are on the CAW roster and want to be part of this Raw Ru Anarchy Roulette, sorry WWE, don't sue me, just let me know in the comments and I'll, and Bush Ranger will put you in a match. I mean, I volunteered for a match tonight. The following contest is a ladder match under triple threat rules. The rules are simple. You must ascend the ladder and pull down the briefcase, which has a $5,000 inside. Introducing first, from Fort Worth, Texas, this is the outlaw, Emily Black. Yeah, that's right. Bush Ranger decided not to be a cheapskate this week. Oi, I heard that. You were meant to, Ranger. And he's put $5,000 in the briefcase. No title match on the line this time. Just $5,000. Uh, yeah. Combat zone isn't happening for another month. And now introducing the second competitor in this match. From Rhyme City. This is Pokemon Girl. And if you haven't played Sc Pokemon Scarlet or Violet. Well it does have its issues but it is a very good game. Just give it a chance for Nintendo to fix it up. But it looks like Pokemon Girl is going for her Lucario gear tonight. Yeah, 
Yeah, don't sue either one of us. And now introducing the final competitor in this match. Representing the PWO, Pony World Order. Now making her home in Ponyville. She is the great and powerful Trixie Lola Moon. And it looks like she's introducing a brand new look tonight. I think I've got to say, it's a pretty thick, good look. Showing off her mod, showing off her magician gear tonight. Well, we are in Las Vegas, Nevada, so why the hell not, eh? Now, if you haven't seen a ladder match last week, well, you should have tuned in last week because there was a really epic Fatal 4-Way ladder match where Kaze earned himself a championship match against our current women's champion, if she's the champion by combat zone, Annika Fairholt. Also a little reminder, no championships will be on the line tonight. Emily Black is ready. Pokemon Girl is ready. And Trixie Lalamoon is ready. I hope you don't destroy that outfit. And there goes the bell that matches on. And Emily Black slides out of the ring. Looks like she's going to be... No! She decided not to grab the ladder. Because in true threat matches, you basically have to keep your head on a swivel. Suplex, kip up, leg drop. And even in high heels, Tri wait, Trixie's wearing high heels? I hope she doesn't snap her ankles. I mean, she doesn't look like she'd be used to wearing high heels in the ring. And Cutler Girl, and Pokemon Girl slides out of the ring. And again, decides she's not grabbing the ladder. And Trixie going for those, well, those cartwheel DDTs. And, yeah, Trixie rolls out of the ring. And... She's standing next to the ladder, but decides not to go for it. Pretty much you've got to incapacitate your opponent long enough so you can climb the ladder and retrieve the briefcase, which has $5,000 in it, I must, I must remind everyone. Hey, Ranger, you sure you didn't put Monopoly money in there? What kind of a cheapskate changeling do you take me for? All right. Playmobil money. Joking, Bruce, don't look at me like that. Sometimes I wonder about you, Ranger. And Emily Black sets up the ladder. And take down. And Trixie up. And what's she going to do with the outlaw? And on the shoulder, roll the dice, snake eyes. And a kick to the side of the head. And Emily Black climbs up the ladder. And Trixie, Irish whips Pokemon Girl out of the ring and shoves the ladder out from underneath the Outlaw and power bomb right on the ladder. Bloody hell, that was painful. And neck breaker. Oh, the back of the Outlaw's head hit the back of that ladder. And Pokemon Girl slammed the ladder into the back of the Outlaw, Emily Black. Kick to the back of the knee. And on the shoulders, Trixie struggling, and a reverse, DDT. And Trixie picks up Pokemon Girl, and dragging her to the ropes, and puts her into the turnbuckles. And looks like Trixie's going to go for the ladder. She's just holding it, waiting for Pokemon Girl, and knocks her down. And quickly sets up the ladder. And up goes Trixie, and up goes Pokemon Girl. And awesome. Oh, 
stamp face first, but the outlaw is trying to drag Pokemon Girl off the ladder. The Pokemon Girl kicked her off. Punch, punch Trixie off the ladder. And a shot to the spine. And oh, what an awkward landing from Pokemon Girl. And Trixie back up and grabs the suitcase. And the outlaw just shoved the ladder down and the electric chair drop. I guess I might as well say it, if you live in America or anywhere else that celebrates this, happy Thanksgiving. I'm from Australia, so I don't celebrate that holiday. And overhead punch. And Outlaw is going to climb up to the top of the turnbuckles. She's just waiting for Trixie to get... Ah, she changes her mind. And side rush and leg sweep as Pokemon Girl quickly ascends the ladder. And looks like she's going to go for it. Nope, back down. Punch to the side of the head and... Oh, shit, what's she going to do? She just choked... Nope, Pokemon Girl swats it away. And they're punching. Constantly punching and elbow strike. And again, trying to choke Pokemon Girl on top and Pokemon Girl just swats it away. And sh just flung off the bottom. And now the outlaw Emily Black is going to go for the suitcase. And Trixie quickly climbs up the ladder. Wait, I've got to take a breath. And, oh shit. Oh. Holy fucking shit! Someone get the medics down there, I think Trixie's dead! And the, and the outlaw really black. I'm surprised she got up because she fell just as hard as Trixie did. Jesus Christ. Medics, get down there. And Trixie's getting up. I'm surprised at that. And slides underneath the bottom row, but quickly ascends the ladder while Pokemon Girl and outlaw really black are fighting each other out there. And oh, Trixie's trying to undo the... Well, the combination lock up there. Well, Pokemon Girl is trying to stop and slap to the face on the outlaw Emily Black. Looks like one part of the lock has been broken. And Trixie falls down from the ladder. And single arm DDT. Followed by an elbow drop. And the outlaw Emily Black rolls out of the ring. And Trixie has Pokemon Girl on the ropes. And springboard splash. And the outlaw is going to go for the other ladder while Trixie is there to stop it. Whoa. That ladder came very close to hitting that fan. Bloody hell, I don't think we can take a lawsuit. I don't think a push ranger can afford it. Don't look at me like that, ranger. You know I'm telling the truth. And Irish whip right into the ring steps. And Pokemon Girl looked like she was going to go for something underneath the ring. Back elbow strike. And knee strike. And single legged monkey flip. As the outlaw grabs the ladder already in the ring, while Trixie grabs the one outside and slides it underneath the bottom rope. But she quickly climbs up the one that's already in the ring. And nope. Whoa, shit. I am getting nervous with those two up there now. I'm surprised Trixie's still able to walk after that ball. And Outlaw dodged that slap. And overhead punch. And face first right into the ladder. And kicked off the top. And Pokemon Girl's trying to get the attention of the Outlaw. And she just pushes the ladder out from underneath. And power bomb. And the bottom of her hip bone. Her coccyx bone hit the ladder. That sends electricity right up your ass and out of your mouth. I know that through experience. And it looks like Pokemon Girl is measuring up. Out Laura Millie Black for the Volt Tackle. Gonna have to come up with another name for that move when she's in other Pokemon gear because she usually wears Pikachu attire. And Pokemon Girl climbs up the ladder. 
And this could be a chance to get it. Maybe not. The Outlaw is starting to stir while Trixie is also starting to stir. The Pokemon Girl broke two locks. Three locks. And the Outlaw is trying to stop Pig Pokemon Girl from grabbing it. And push the ladder down. And Pokemon Girl is holding on to dear life. Well, the Outlaw and the Magician are fighting each other. And a power bomb attempt, but Trixie breaks out of it while Pokemon Girl just falls down. Clothesline over the top rope onto the floor. And a reverse suplex. And knee drop to the lower back. Stomp on the shoulder blade. And take down. High right. And Trixie's climbing up the top rope. Climbing up to the top of the ladder and trying to break the... Or trying to break the locks, but there's still four parts of that locks left. Side rush and leg sweep. And Trixie really, not really that good at lock picking, is she? And she just broke two locks. But the outlaw stopped her and she fell down from the top of the ladder. And club to the shoulder blades and oh, she stopped herself. Super kick, uppercut. And Pokemon Girl's the only one still standing, but now she's measuring up the Outlaw Emily Black again. No, she changes her mind. And neck breaker. Maybe the ladder got in her way, I don't know. Stomp to the back of the head, another stomp. And a stomp again. Yeah, you're not the only one that's surprised, but she's going to have to get dragged to Nurse Bantry as soon as this match is over to get the okay. And hung up the dry on the top right. Emily Black picks up Pokemon Girl. And headbutt. And Trixie just climbs up the ladder and the outlaw finally notices. And looks like Emily Black is... No, she's just going to push the ladder out from underneath Trixie. And take down. And Pokemon Girl grabs Trixie off and electric chair drop. Picks up the ladder, and overhead punch. It's showtime, only just missing the ladder. And Trixie picks up the ladder, sets it up in the middle of the ring. And Trick, I think Trixie's a little bit dizzy from that fall earlier. She finally climbs to the, to the ladder. Up one more run and trying to break the locks. All right, Pokemon go up. And oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, no, no, no. Okay, it's in the ring this time, good. But still, that's two of those Trixie's taken. Good God, I think she's dead. And the crowd's showing their approval of all three of these women. And that's it, match over. Bloody hell, that was a hell of a match. And now the medical team is running down the ringside to check Trixie. And the Wiley Coyote Cam. And there was the Volt Tackle. Super Kick followed by the Uppercut. And the Showtime. And I think this is what ended it for Trixie. Yep, it was. But let's get the official word. Here is your winner, Pokemon Girl! Well, that's that match. Now it's time to put that up quickly. Now it's time for the next spin of the Anarchy Wheel. And you know what, Ranger? I'm taking the next match. I don't care who my opponent is. But let's find out what my match is going to be. I'm going to be competing in a... Balls Count Anywhere match. That's right up my alley. Just got to quickly set it up.
they are, they again this is staying up because Ranger does not want to reveal what the matches are tonight. And I did say to Ranger, I don't care who my opponent is, I just want to compete tonight. Contest is scheduled for one fall. It is a false count anywhere match. Introducing first. He is from Adelaide, South Australia. This is the Wild One, Bruce Northaway. From Chroma City, he is the walking apocalypse.
here is your winner, the wild one, Bruce, not the way. Yeah, I know I'm going to have to uh, make it up to Bruce for, to put him through that, but I thought it would be funny. But bloody hell, I'm surprised he actually won that match. I mean, Apocalypse is three times his size. But I guess while Bruce make, is making his way back to the gorilla possession to the commentary table, let's spin the wheel to find out what the next match is going to be. And the next match is going to be... Hell no, we already done that. We're spinning it one more time. It's going to be a hell in the cell match. Now let's find out. Now let's put it together and see who's going to be in that match. And you know, I've been wanting to experiment with this for ages, so I'm setting it up as a fatal four-way match. Since we already just had a men's match, it's going to be four women in this match. Ranger, I am going to get you for putting me in the Ring of Apocalypse. What, you won the match? Don't complain. Shut up, Ranger. Alright, I deserve that. God, he fucking hits like a truck, that guy. Damn it! I muck something up here. Well, it looks like the magic users have changed the arena around. I am not... I'm not changing it around. The match will just happen here. I'm not going to reset it. But here are your three... Here are your four competitors in this match. Four of the biggest women we have on the CAW roster. I just hope the cage is going to be strong enough to contain all four of these women. See ya, Anna. Catch the replays later. The following contest is scheduled inside the, the Prison Yard Riot. Introducing first from the Multiverse Protection Agency and the NWOW. This representing Ruthless Aggression, this is Officer Ruth McKay. Now I know in that other organization, GCA, I think it is, quote me if I'm wrong, she seems to be having a rivalry against a wrestler named Go Go Tornado. I've actually been seeing her wrestle. I'm actually impressed with her. Ranger might one day offer her a contract. But then we'll have two superheroes in this organization and Roof will not be happy about that one. And now introducing the second competitor in this match. From Roma City, this is HIT THE DICK! Oh, how'd you get that past customs? Oh. 
This is chaos. Okay. No odds are someone is going to get hurt in this match. I mean, have you seen the bloody, for lack of a better word, the beef in this match? These are the four biggest women on the CAW roster we have right now. Not including Nightmaid. And now, introducing the next competitor in this match. From Mayfoot in the Equestrian Wastelands, this is the Hired Gun, Silverstorm! And if you haven't read the story, Fallout Equestria Heroes, well, I might as well tell you about Ruth McCut. I'm sorry, Silverstorm. She is actually a few, you know, fries short of a Happy Meal, but she is one hell of a strategist. She has one robotic eye, one robotic arm, and one robotic leg. But she keeps the robotic eye covered as a form of self-punishment. Read the story to find out why. And now, introducing the final competitor in this match. From the Arctic Circle. She is the woman with a frozen heart. This is Glacia. This match is going to be brutal. I can already see it. Jesus, I'm still feeling those hits from Apocalypse. No, I'm not going to see Nurse Banshee. Not until the show's over, Ranger. Don't give me that look. Oh, we also got an update from Trixie. She is, um, she is not seriously injured. The only thing she got is a mild whiplash. Means she'll be out for at least one week. Well, that's good, because it could have been worse. A lot worse. I've I've actually been in the ring where a guy broke his neck. I mean, it was not my fault. He tried to do a moonsault from the top rope and landed smack dab on the on the top of his head. I refused to pin him after that. Just told the referee to just finish the match. I'm not going on. He's hurt. All right, lower the cage. Ruth is ready. Chaos is ready. Silver is ready, and Glacier is ready. Right, ref, ring the bell. Let's do it. And bloody hell, all four of these women dwarf the ref. And I know it says SmackDown Arena because I botched up setting the arena. I am not going to reset the match because of that. And Glacier we were a, got hit with a reverse DDT, and bloody hell, a Samoan drop to the bloody... Power slam position, that was impressive. Back right. And Glacier rolling, going out of the ring to catch up. No, she's going to go for a weapon. Well, still, whoa. Ruth just delivers a side slam. She grabbed the chair and just put it in the ring. And Irish whip into the steel steps. Headbutt. I don't think that would have, I don't think that would have um, affected Silverstorm, I mean, she headbutted her bloody robotic eye. Maybe it would have, I don't know. And Ruth picks up Silver. I mean, these two have had a... Those two have had an epic rivalry a couple of years ago in CAW. Looks like they're just going to rekindle it. And Silver Irish whips Ruth back in the ring and quickly follows her. Well, back on the outside, Chaos and Glacier are just throwing each other around the ring. Over the top rope onto the floor. Picks her, picks her up. Headbutt. Right into the side of the cage. Jawbreaker. And it looks like Silver is trying to break the cage. Back elbow strike. And Irish whip to the other side of the cage. And Glacier blocked whatever Chaos was seeking. Headbutt. I know this isn't the first time Glacier, I meant 
Silverstorm and Chaos have been in a, one of these matches together. Oh my god, the cage is broken. Man, I feel sorry for the Spanish announce team out there right now. Bunch to the side of the head. And, oh cripes, all four women are out of the mat, out of the cage. This is not good. Back elbow strike. Because the decisions have to be in the ring, it's not falls anywhere rules. And looks like Chaos is going to climb the cage. And Silver and Ruth McKay is going to follow. While Glacier and Silverstorm are battling each other on the other side of the cage there. Punch the side of the head. Now if you haven't seen the King of the Ring 1998, you'd know how it's a bad idea to be on top of that cage. And Ruth delivering a bear hug on, on Chaos, and Chaos fights out of it. It wouldn't have mattered if Chaos tapped out. She's not in the ring. So it wouldn't have counted. And side slam on the top of the cage. Picks her up, kick to the midsection court. And German suplex on the top of the cage, one of the middle panels. And I've actually lost track of what's going on here. German suplex. It looks like looks like she's going for a trip to Suplex City. While you're there, pick yourself up a key ring. And Silverstorm and Glacier are just really brutally battling each other out there. And Chaos. No. Roof McKay reverses. Chaos blocked. And capture suplex. Or the Tazplex, if you will. Knee to the side of the head. And a stomp on the sh and a stomp on the arm. And the ref can do the ref can't do anything but advise all four women to get back in the ring. And Chaos picks up Ruth. That no knee strike to the midsection. While Silverstorm just delivered a knee to Glacier on the outside. Running power slam. And choke toss. I can see it from here, that one panel there starting to buckle underneath the weight of these two. I'm not calling them fat, I want to survive. Overhead punch. And super. Jesus Christ! Chaos just fell down and Ruth McKay's gone for the pinfall. One, two. Oh, bloody hell, how did Chaos survive that? Man, even the women from Chroma City are scary. And power bomb on the top of the cage. Well, Roof hicks up the steel chair. And no, Chaos blocks it. And shot to the shoulder blades and side slam on the top of the cage. Looks like Chaos is thinking Suplex City one more time. And whoa. And a power bomb on the top of the cage. Chaos picks up the chair. Nope. Ruth with a single arm power bomb. And drops down for the pinfall. One. Two, three, that's it. I think it was all she wrote as soon as Chaos was slammed through the cage. No replays, all right. Here is your winner, Ruth McKay. Bloody hell, that match was brutal. What, can, what else can you say about that? That match was brutal. Now it's time to find out what the next match is. So, Wheel of Anarchy, spin, spin, spin. Give us the match and we will grin. And the next match is going to be a Singapore cane match. If you don't know what that is, that means the only weapons that are allowed in this match are the kendo sticks that are being placed underneath the ring right now.
Okay, so that was the women, so now it's the men's turn. So I reckon... making the mistake with the arena this time. Yeah, there we go. And the wrestlers who volunteer and the wrestlers who are gonna be in this match. It whoops wrong button. It's gonna be Captain Twisted Jack and the legendary super soldier Solid Snake. Remember the only weapons available to these two in this match unless you count the two chairs by the commentary table surprise the ring crew didn't grab those are the kendo sticks that are underneath the ring and if you think those kendo sticks are only designed to make a noise they're made of fucking bamboo they sting like a motherfucker anyone who's been hit with one of those will tell you the following contest is a Singapore cane match scheduled for one fall Introducing first, from the Caribbean, this is Captain Twisted Jack! Oh, bloody hell, I can smell it from here. This guy been in the rum again? And he didn't save any for me? Ranger, I thought alcohol was not allowed. He got drunk before the show. I can't say anything else about that. Alright then. But if you're wondering why the rum's gone, well, ask Captain Twisted Jack. Odds are he's probably drunk at all. But then Twisted Jack, even while plastered, is a hell of an athlete. I mean, he is former CAW world champion. He did hold that for a few months. And now, introducing his opponent. From Alaska, he is the legendary super soldier, Solid Snake. And Snake primes it up and pushes the button for the C4. If you don't know anything about Solid Snake, first of all, what's the matter with you? Go play any Metal Gear Solid game. I recommend Metal Gear Solid 3, even though you're not playing as Solid Snake, you're playing as his father, Big Boss, but that is a good game. If you can play it, do it. If not, find a way to play it. And Snake is another competitor who is a former CAW World Champion. Would you actually call Captain Twisted Jack a gentleman? I wouldn't call him a gentleman. Hell, I think if you call him a gentleman, he might get offended. I mean, hell. Solid Snake once defeated Stone Cold True Blue to become the CAW World Champion. He made him pass out from the silent takedown. So Snake is no pushover. And he has done incredible feats. Alright. Captain Twisted Jack is ready. Solid Snake is ready. Right, ref, ring that bell. 
Let's do it and be right back. I have to go use the announcer's room. I'm back. I'm not going to ask about that, Hannah. And an armbar. Remember, in this type of match, there are no countouts and there are no DQs. Only way to win the match is pinfall and submission, I'm assuming, just inside the ring. I don't know if this is false count anywhere rules. And the captain has snake on his shoulders and snake eyes. Yeah, I realized what I said after I said it. And Powerball. And kick the... Well, kick between the blades. Forearm. And down goes Snake. And the captain dragging Snake away from the ropes. And Snake just got up in the seating position and captain picks him back up. I have no idea what the hell captain was thinking, but headbutt. And Irish whip to the turnbuckle. Slap to the chest. I'm surprised neither one of these two have gone out to the ring and grabbed one of the kendo sticks underneath it. Running Bulldog. And knee on the arm. And Captain gone for the pinfall. One, two, kick out on two. And the Captain picking him up. Blocks that one and elbow sh Elbow to the arm, jaw. And Captain just made Snake walk the plank. With the Spanish fly. And a kick. And again, made him walk the plank. Going for the pinfall. One. Two. Kick out. And Snake only just kicked out and the Captain shocked. Or maybe that was a clap of respect. I don't know. I mean, the Pirates actually respect people each other except members of their own crew, I don't know. Yeah, I know I play a lot of CFCs, but I'm so less slow. And Snake with the CQC. And he picks the captain up and he's going for the silent takedown. Is the captain going to pass out, tap out, or, well, snap? And the ref there to make sure. And the ref waves it off as Snake just throws him to the ground. And goes for the pinfall. One, two, kick out. And I don't think these two care about the weapons right now. They just want to fight. I'm kind of disappointed because I want to see those kendo sticks. And Zaguri to the back of the head. Stomp on the ankle. And Enziguri again. Elbow drop to the lower back. Stomp to the forearm. And the captain. Oh, that fancy. Just, just for a simple head scissors. Get off it. And the captain has snake on his shoulders. And holy shit. Power bomb to the outside. And the oh, it is false count anywhere rules. One. Two. 
kick out. And Snake only just kicked out of that one. And the captain is pissed off, telling the ref, count. you should have counted one more time. Leg trip. And Snake picks up the captain, and Irish whip back to the inside of the ring. And where the hell is Snake going? He just walked around the ring. I'm surprised he didn't go for one of those weapons. Kick to the side of the head, back of the knee, side of the head. And punch to the side of the face. And a single-legged DDT. Standing, shooting star press. Picks him up. Kick to the midsection. Punch to the side of the head. And... Side rushing leg sweep. Again, picks him up. Elbow strike, second. And another one. Kick and... Sunset flip power bomb. And kick to the midsection. I think, I don't know what the captain was thinking there. But Irish whip over the top rope onto the floor. Quickly followed by Snake. And the ref quickly jumps out of the ring as well. And the commentary table looks like one of them dropped their water. And Snake just Irish whips back in the ring. It looks like he wants this to end in the mat in the ring. Oh, he tried to go for a roundhouse kick, but the captain ducked and slid aside. And a kick to the side of the head and walk the plank. One, two, three, that's it. Bloody hell, that from what I saw was a good match. Back and forth, just the way I love it. And the CQC, the close quarters combat. Silent takedown. I'm surprised he didn't make the captain pass out, but he's already passed out drunk if you think about it. <laughs> and yeah, that I thought would have ended the match. Hell, it would have ended the match in a lot of cases. And cameraman, you should have followed them. What's the matter with you? And I think that was the one that ended the match. But let's get the official word. Here is your winner, Captain Twisted Jack. Good match. Now it's time to spin the wheel again. And since that was a men's match, the next match is going to be for the lovely ladies. All right. Wheel of Anarchy. Spin, spin, spin. I'm not going to finish that. But the next match is going to be a... Well, we already had a false count anyway. Match, so we'll spin it again. Oh, boy. Well, looks like the next match will not be a women's match because women don't bleed in this game. So we're going to do a first blood contest. Okay, after this, the next two matches will be with ladies matches, so... Well, I think he's been itching for a match tonight, so I'll put him in the, ring, in the ring. And his opponent will be... The next match is going to be Texan Gamer 13 versus TNT in a first blood match. If you are unfamiliar with the first blood rules, basically the rules of the match is in the name of the match. To win the match, you just simply have to make your opponent bleed. That's it. 
No pinfalls, no submissions, no countouts, no DQs. The only way to win the match is to make your opponent bleed. The following contest is a first blood match. Where, the w where to win, you have to make your opponent bleed. Introducing first, by now, if you do not know where he is from, seriously, what's the matter with you? Go buy yourself a glow. Go buy yourself an app. Oh, wait, 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 wait. TNT. Looks like TNT doesn't want us to wait for the ring introductions. He wants the match now. And just clotheslines Texan t from behind. Well, I guess I won't be finishing it. But the match won't be officially started until both men get in the ring. And TNT biting the fingers of Texan. And the crowd chanting, break the fingers. I don't care what Mark Wondersham says, that's what they're chanting, break the fingers. European uppercut. And it looks like Texan has taken his ring jacket off and the match is officially, well, the match technically will have to start now. And it doesn't matter where this match ends up. Hell, it could end in the Mississippi River, even though that's nowhere near Las Vegas, Nevada. I don't know American geology, give me a break. Hell, it could end in the Trump, in the Trump Tower. Actually, make it in the Trump Tower and destroy as many and destroy as many slot machines as you can in there. Trump does not deserve it. Okay, I'm going to stop being political now. Snap jab and caught. Kick to the back of the knee. Kick to the back of the thigh. Kick to the knee. And TNT. Michinoku driver into a armbar. And Texan rolling through, but nope. TNT still holds it. And it looks like TNT is going to play the slots. Oh, triple sevens. You got to love those one arm bandits. And again, TNT biting the fingers of Texan. And he's going to do it again. I mean, come on, TNT is out of his fucking mind. What can you say about that? Hey. I don't think that'd be a good idea. You got a mat you got a match tonight. You don't want to get arrested. And a combination suplex. And forearm strike, but he didn't make TNT bleed. Looks like both wrestlers did not want to enter the ring. And it looks like TNT was trying to work. I mean Texans trying to work on TNT's leg. And catch a knee strike. Stomp on the midsection, kick to the chest. Stomp to the midsection, a, and a stomp to the elbow. And wrenching back on the neck, and TNT breaks out of it. Elbow strike, another elbow strike, but this time blocked. And Northern Light suplex. And Texan holds onto it and delivers a twisting suplex. And Texan picks up TNT, snap jab, overhead punch. Looks like he is trying to draw blood right now. And knee strike to the midsection. Scissors kick. And... Oh, is he bleeding? No, he's not. And a catch a knee strike. And T Texan looks determined to make TNT bleed after being attacked from behind. Stomp on the elbow again. Kick to the chest. Stomp on the knee. Kick to the knee again. And a stomp on the arm. God, I wish that I wish that ring crew with the bloody with that light there would make its mind up. Sling blade. Because you can cause epilepsy with that shit. Kick to the knee and well, he faked the first one, but didn't miss the second one. And single legged DDT. Texan in the ring. Quickly followed by TNT. And technically the match would officially start, but it already started. And wait. That better not be the move I think it is because I thought I'd 
Oh, God damn it. I thought I removed that move from all of them. Wait, is that someone's ring music playing? What the hell is going on? Seriously, what the fuck just happened? And that's it! The distraction just cost TNT the match. Why the hell were they playing his ring music? He is not welcome here. Nobody wants that lion sack of shit anywhere in this promotion. That doesn't matter. Let's get to the to the official word. Here is your winner, Texan. And Texan celebrating his victory. Even though he was attacked from behind just as the match started. And I thought and honestly, I thought TNT and Texan were mates. But I guess when it comes to fighting, there are no mates in wrestling. And uh, no, I'm not going to say that guy's name because I'm not going to give him any glory. Alright, now it's time to spin the wheel again. And this time it will be, no matter what, the lovely ladies. For the next two matches at least. Yeah, no, I'm not doing that one. And this match is again going to be a Singapore Kane match. In fact, hang on, I'm going to quickly remove that. I'm going to remove the Triple Threat 2 falls from it. In fact, since I removed it, I'll spin it. The, this time, the match, it'll be the match. Extreme Rules match. Shit. Yeah, I have no idea how the hell that happened, so I'll just move it to the side here. There we go, that'll do. So extreme rules are basically what rules, no rules. Anything goes. And I think... Fix something up. So just listen to our sponsor, Doctor Buy Our Shit.
Sorry about that, I had to pick something up. So, back to extreme rules. And I remember who I was setting up. Just gonna keep it covered. Because Ranger wants to keep the participants a secret. Alright. The following contest is an Extreme Rules match. Introducing first. From Mobius. She is the CAW Women's Champion. The Flying Puma. Hanako. Oh, whoa, whoa, she's about, she's sprung with energy right now. Did she just have a, did she have a whole bag of sweets before she went out there? Because she looks like she's chock full of energy right now. Her opponent. This is going to be really interesting now. She is from 110th Street in Harlem, New York. This is Jackie Rosa. Even though Jackie Rosa prefers balls count anywhere matches, she will do Extreme Rules matches. So this is going to be really interesting. No titles are on the line and no title matches are up for grabs. The title match for this title at CAW Combat Zone has already been set in stone. And I know there's a certain fox in the chat who believes she knows this woman. He knows this woman. I'm sorry about that fox. Please don't bite my fingers off. Oh, buy you a cake to an apology for later. And a bottle of booze, but the bottle of booze is for me. And if you can't hear what's playing right now, yeah, that theme song is going to play all the way through Jackie Rose's match. I just need to know, chat, can you hear me over the chat? Because I haven't adjusted the volume. Okay, Hanukkah Fairhall is ready. Jackie Rosa is ready. Right, ref, ring the bell. Let's do this. And Hanako delivering a... Nope. Jackie fights out of it with a couple of punches to the forehead. Close line, but Hanako just ran aside. And Hanako is a ball of energy right now, going straight for the pinfall. And not even a one count. Kick to the back of the head. Her up. And a. Well, she was going to deliver a suplex, but no, reversed into a reverse suplex. And Twitch, don't get on my ass. This song is copyright free. And Jackie's just walking around the bloody ropes. Looks like Hanako had enough and just punched Jackie. And kicked her off the top. There are no count outs and no DQs, but the decisions in this match have to be in the ring. Leg drop. And drops a knee, but didn't catch anything. Stuck to that one. And knee shot to the midsection. And backbreaker, second backbreaker. And tossed aside like a bag of potatoes. And grabs and Irish whip right into the ring post. And the, anyone else just hear that gong? Bloody hell, that will definitely ring your bell. 
And Jackie back in the ring and rolls out and looks like she's going to go for a weapon and grabs a steel chair. G'day, how you going? And German suplex. If this is your first time watching me, please consider following because I need about 19 more followers before I can get affiliated here on Twitch. And honestly, I think that would be nice to be in a, to be affiliated. And miss that punch and forearm to the chest. And a kick to the side of the head. Core and knee strike. And knee strike back. And Jackie picks up Panico and power slam for standing position. And Jackie Rosa going to the middle rope. Splash in the middle rope. And thank you for the follow. I hope you enjoy CAW Chaos Action Wrestling. German suplex, release. And Hanako going for the pinfall. One, two, kick out on two. And Hanako a bit shocked that Jackie kicked out of that one. And Hanako ducked underneath the bottom rope. Looks like she's going to go for a weapon. And she grabs a baseball bat. And Jackie wouldn't, wouldn't even let her use it. And Jackie just picks up and tosses Hanako into the safety rail. And knee smash. Get the paint that flash back with that one. And baseball bat shot to the middle of the ice. Snap jab. Overhead punch. Overhead punch. And... Harakurana, only just missing the baseball bat. Stop. And Hanako picks up the bat. And gives her a couple of cracks in the head. Remember, kids, crack is whack. Picks her up. And far away slam. And Jackie picks up the bat. And right in the head. But Jack, but Panico didn't even fall down. She just absorbed it and grabbed the bat off it. And a... But Jackie didn't absorb that one. And flatliner. Stop on the arm. Remember, this match has to end in the ring. It may be extreme rules, but it has to be in the ring. And what's she gonna do? Gorilla press drop. And Jackie picks up Hanako. And Irish whip and looks like Hanako tripped over the chair while she was running. And I think the fox just realized who's in the ring. I guess you didn't hear me slip earlier. Okay, no cake. And choke toss to the side. And Jackie picks up the chair and cracks Hanako in the forehead. On the knee. And on the chest. And Hanako rolls back and... Well, she makes Jackie drop the chair. And Irish whip right into the ring post. And neck break. Though I think Hanako would have heard her knees landing on the chair like that. And it looks like Hanako grabs the ladder and cracks Jackie in the face with it. Wait, bread? Are you talking about literal bread or the slang for money? Because I don't get it. I'm Australian, not a New Yorker. Snapchat and shot to the chest. And I think one of the Spanish announced team's microphone has got a mind of its own. And finally falls up. And Jackie tripped over the ladder. As Hanako picks it up, well, changes her mind and drops it. And Jackie decides she wants to go back in the ring. And quickly followed by Hanako Fa Hanukkah Fairhold. Irish whip to the turnbuckle. And Jackie, what's she going to do here? Close line into the turnbuckle. And drops down. And stomp on the arm. And Jackie picks Hanako up. Shot to the chest. Another shot to the chest. And this is a good back and forth and brutal match. Reverse. DDT. Oh, real wrong. Oh, real bread. Okay, then. 
Shot to the midsection. And Irish whip to the turnbuckles. Kick to the midsection. Stomp to the chest. Kick to the midsection back. And, a, and Jackie up. Flat line. Is that going to be enough? One. Two. Three, that's it. Bloody hell, that was a good, brutal back and forth match. Shouldn't be disappointed with that one. That was a good fight. Now, let's have a look at the replays of this match. I mean, Hanako started off as a ball of energy, but remember, kids, eating too much sugar will eventually make you crash out. You may give you a temporary boost of energy, but the energy does not last very long. And the kick out, and the flatliner on the outside, only just missing the bat. And there was the flatliner at the end of the match. But let's get the official word. Here is your winner, Jackie Rosa. Does Jackie Rosa look like she's wearing orange? I don't think she's ever been arrested. Hey, she ran out to the ring like a ball of energy. I was just making jokes about it. But that's the end of that match. Now it's time to get ready for the next for the next spin the wheel. And now let's find out what the next match is going to be. And again, it's going to be for the lovely lady. So, wheel of anarchy, do your job. The next match is going to be a. Already had a ladder match for the ladies earlier, so spinning again. It's going to be a standard steel cage match. So let's set that up. Okay, who hasn't wrestled tonight? I think I'll put Moddy's favourite wrestler on my roster. I'm going to kick this sign up because, well, keep it a surprise. You think you know me? And if any rest, and if any first timer is watching this show and is unfamiliar with the steel cage match, it's basically a match where the ring is surrounded by a cage. Pinfall, submissions, or escape is the only way to win the match. Ladies and gentlemen, the following is a steel cage match. Introducing first. She is from the dark side of the Orient. This is the Silent Dark Warrior. Oni! And Oni is a very unique individual here in CAW because she does not talk. She doesn't even make a sound and there is a reason for that. It's because she can't. Back in Japan, she was offered the opportunity to receive a dark power. A dark power that can be used for good. But this part, but accepting this dark power comes at a cost. It could take away your love of breadsticks. It could take away, like just say, three toes on your left foot. Hell, it could take away half your liver. But in Oni's case, it took away her ability to talk and make sounds. 
The only sounds I ever heard her make was a whistle to get, try to get your attention. Other than that, nothing. And now introducing the next competitor in this match. From the other side of darkness. Now she walks within the light. This is Nico Dark. No, I don't just um, host female wrestlers. I'm only doing two female matches in a row because two matches ago I had two men's matches in a row, so it's only just fair. I normally have women's, then men's, women's, and men. But because women don't do first blood matches, I decided to give two the women two matches in a row. Does that make sense? And Neko Dark, she is one half of the Dark Zodiac tag team. But I guess I won't be hearing, yeah, Mexico in the chat. Because, well... Uh... What just happened? Did the game just glitch or something? Because... I think it looked like Neko Dark dislocated both her shoulders and popped them back into place. Someone's going to need to click that. Well, the roster's pretty full at the moment, but I will try to have a look into it. And there goes the bell. Now, the ref's only job in this match is to just say who the winner is. Oni picks up Neko Dark. And a snap suplex. And landing right on the ropes. And a kick to the top of the head. Now, for those of you who are familiar with the NWW slash GCA, there is a wrestler on their roster named Dollface. I actually want to see Dollface and Oni in, the ma in a match together. Because I think that would be a creepy showdown. And Oni delivers an elbow to the top of Neko's head. Knee drop missed. And roundhouse kick to the midsection. And it looks like Neko Dark is going to try to get out of the match. Remember, escape rules apply. And Oni slams Neko Dark's knees into the cage. Looks like Neko Dark was going to try to escape one more time. And kick to the side of the head. And double axe handle from the top ropes. And Neko Dark, Neko Dark with an anaconda vice. No, a modified anaconda device. It's in the other direction, it doesn't matter. Cutler of knees and Neko Dark is forced to let go. Ducked and springboard Pele kick. It looks like Neko Dark is again going to try to escape the cage. And only back onto her feet very quickly. And it looks like Neko Dark, looks like Oni is going to try to follow Neko up there. Oh, God, this match is going to go too quickly, isn't it? And Neko on the, Neko on the top, Oni on the top. But it looks like Neko Dark... No! Oni stopped Neko Dark from escaping. And they're both sitting on top of the cage. And, oh, face first, and Neko almost lost her balance. And face first, and... She just tossed Oni back into the ring. And it looks like Neko Dark is going to try to make her escape. Yeah, from now on I'm going to stop the escape rules in cage matches because they go too quickly. And it looks like Neko Dark escaped the cage as Oni got up. And Oni can do nothing now just but watch the match finish. Yeah, that match went too quickly, honestly. From now on, cage matches are not escape rules. Huh? Cameraman, come on, do your job! Come on, cameraman, you bastard! Ranger, why do you hire some inept cameramen, honestly? 
they? They work cheap, all right? All right. But let's get the official word. Here is your winner, Neko Da. Yeah, I ain't doing that. Because honestly, that match went too quick. But now it's time to spin the wheel again. And it's going to be the men's turn. So, Wheel of Anarchy, do your job. What are you going to get for me this time? I already had a Singapore cane, so I'm going to spin again. And it looks like it's time we're going to have a TLC match. Tables, ladders, and chairs. Hey, who let her in here? And... Why not? I'm gonna add four men in this match. But this time, there will be nothing hanging above the ring. It's just gonna be... Tables, ladders, and chairs around the ring, and, well... Pinfall and submissions. Starlight's not on the show tonight from all I know, but why do you keep bringing her up? Here it is, a TLC match, or as XPWL would call this match, the Carpenter's Wet Dream match. And in this match we're going to have D71092, the Demon of Dark Omens Rakadol, the post-apocalyptic bounty hunter known as the Wastelander, and Tonka Tough Steve Roller. But this is going to be a brutal fight because all four of these men know about brutality. And one of these four men are one of the current champions here in CAW. The following contest. Hey, wait, there is something hanging above the ring. Ranger, did you put another $5,000 in that suitcase? Yeah, of course I did. I'm not cheap, you know. Whatever you say, Ranger. All right, looks like this match is going to be ladder match rule. So, introducing first, representing the XPWL, from the edge of reality, he is known as the Demon of Dark Omens, Rackadile! And normally, it's, and normally I thought only the Dragon Lady brings a torch to ringside to help her breathe fire even though she doesn't really need it. I honestly hope Magic Man doesn't find out about that fire because she ain't gonna be happy about that one. Crowd behind the demon racquetball in this one, but there are still three more men to come out there. I think we might have only two more matches after this one. One more ladies match and one more men's match. So this is going to be good. 
And now, introducing the next competitor in this match. Really like taking your time going down to the ring there, don't you fella? From the Armageddon, he is the post-apocalyptic bounty hunter and the CAW Intercontinental Champion. No, I didn't turn that on or off. I just didn't. This is the post-apocalyptic bounty hunter, the Wastelander. If you're in the Armageddon and if you have a price on your head, well, don't run because you'll be, because you'll just get, because you'll just get captured tired. Because the Wastelander will not stop chasing you until he gets the bounty. I guess we'll find out if this is going to be on the ladder rules or on the pinfall and submission rules. And just to remind you, that championship that's around the Wastelander's waist is not on the line in this match. It's just a, it's just five thousand dollars, which is sitting in that briefcase above the ring. And now introducing the next competitor in this match. From the SCP Foundation, Sight Redacted. Reason for being here, Redacted. Real name, Redacted. This is the D-Class Personnel, D71092. One day, the SCP Foundation is going to give us some information on this guy. I mean, SOME information on this guy. I mean, what's his favourite donut topping? Redacted. Does he like watching Saturday morning cartoons back in the 80s and early 90s? Redacted. Does he stare out of the bars of his cell, hoping to get released? Redacted. One day, we're going to get some information on this guy. One day. Oh, how do you know that? The SCP Keep Foundation keep in the information on this guy. Well, redacted. We only know his D-Class code, and that's 71092. And now introducing the final competitor in this match. From Minnesota, this is Tonka Tough, Steve Roller. And Tonka Tough, Steve Roller, well, basically getting ready for this match. And this guy, you don't want to be in his path because, well, he's still, he'll steamroll over you. Oh, so that's why his name's Steamroller. Now I see the joke. Ranger, Bruce, you know the joke. Shut up, Ranger. All right, all four men are ready. And there goes the bell. And looks like the demon racket though just slid underneath the bottom rope. And there goes Steve Roller. Looks like it's a race on who's gonna grab the ladder first. And the wastelander underneath the bottom rope. And he grabs the ladder from underneath the ring. And gives Steve Roller a crack in the face of it. And slides it, and slides it in. This match, TLC is not tender loving care. 
It's tables, ladders and chairs. Oh my. And the Wasteland is slowly going up and grabbing the suitcase. Trying to break the combination lock up there. And Steve Roller climbing up. I mean he's built for power, not built for speed. And the Wastelander breaks the first lock. But Steve Roller makes him let go. Steve Roller of it. And face first into the top of the ladder. But, and punch to the jaw. Elbow strike. Another elbow strike. Core and overhead punch. And Wastelander choking out Wait, Steve Roller and the Demon Rackadoll just Whoa, wait, and D710, I'm just gonna call it. And D grabs the chair. Headlock, head toss takedown. And Wastelander and the Rack and the Demon are no strangers to each other. In fact, it was the Demon Rackadoll that the Wastelander took the IC title from. And face first with the ladder. And Wastelander picks D up and guillotine on the top rope. And Steve Roller gets back in the ring. And face first with the steel with the ladder. And D gonna grab the gonna try to go for the briefcase. Now I have no idea what the hell D71092 is gonna do with five thousand dollars, because I think the SCP Foundation will just confiscate it off him. D holding on with all his might and well he let go almost landing on racket though with that one hip toss take down and the demon slides under, out of the ring and decides to grab a, la a table and now the match truly is tables ladders and chairs I'm not saying that I'll, I'm not saying that last bit again because the joke's in time and Rack grabs another table from underneath the ring tosses it aside like he didn't even want that and power bomb on the fucking ladder oh, I, thought, I thought I just heard bloody Steve Roller cry out pain from here and up uh, Rackadol picks up the, the table and brings it in and German suplex and a crack with the ladder into the back of the demon's head D sets up the sets up the ladder. And Rack grabs the D. D and back body drop. Well, the wastelander grabs the tape, a chair. Yeah, it's not the strangest match with um, three initials I've ever competed in. And I have competed in this match in my youth. But probably the strangest one I've got is a BLT match. And no, not bacon, lettuce and tomato. Barbed wire, lago and thumbtacks. Gorilla press slam. And Steve Roller, well, got reversed into a DDT on top of the chair. And D picks Steve Roller up. High angle suplex. Back elbow strike. Super kick. And Steve Roller getting up while Rack's thinking about picking up the, the ladder and he picks it up and only to get cut off by the Tonka Tough Steve Roller. And the demon has been busted open. And D just dropped the ladder and it slid to the side. And a crack to the back, and another crack. And sets the and sets the ladder up, and Wastelander sets a table up. Kick to the lower back. Headbutt, another headbutt. And Steve Roller, his D is now busted open. And back elbow strike, and D grabs the table and picks it up. Whoa, Gorilla Press slam right on the edge of the table. Didn't break. And Rackadol slides underneath the bottom rope. And looks like Rackadol's gonna go for the crucifix bomb. And nails it. And Rack looked like he didn't 
looks like Rack did not like where that ladder was placed. And get a Waltz the Goblin. Did I say that right? If not, yeah, sorry. And D climbing up the ladder. Nope, drops down. And Wastelander nails a side rushing leg sweep. And mounted punches. Looks like he's aiming for the cut up just above D's eye. Swatted away. Back elbow strike. Knee strike. Kick to the back. Head and bloody hell. Shot to the ribs. Shot to the ribs again. Knee strike. Overhead punch. Kick and elbow strike. And Rack's gone for the suitcase. Well, Steve Roller was doing the cement mixer, and Steve Roller just noticed Rack just broke one of the combination locks. And just shoves the ladder to the side. Ah, uh, that's, that's fine. And Rack drops down. Landed with an incredible thud. And his arm got slammed into the mat. Steve Roller picks up the ladder. Cracks Rackadol with it. And side rushing leg sweep from the wasteland. And mounted punches. In this match, two wrestlers are bleeding. Oh, look at the mess on Dee's face. He's really been busted open. And... Oh, bloody fud right, right on that ladder. Good timing on Dee's and Wasteland's part. But I doubt they're working together. And far away slam while the Wastelander grabs the ladder. <coughs> and D nails the SCP jackhammer. And right on the shoulders and guillotine on the top rope. And D's delivering a gut wrench. Power bomb on the Wasteland. And looks like D rolled out of the ring. I mean, Wasteland rolled out of the ring to catch a breather. And a crack with the table. And it looks like the table has already suffered a little bit of damage. You can see the crack right there. And D picks up the Tonka Tough Steve Roller. And looks like he's trying to get into a better position. But the demon rolled in and made the ladder table fall down. And Irish whip to the turnbuckles. And Steve Roller with a compactor. And Steve Roller jumped out of the ring. Oh, he wanted the chair. I thought he would have gone for the ladder because this is on the ladder match rule. And Swanton bomb from the top rope. I don't think any of these men are really caring about the money right now. They just want to fight. And suplex into a knee strike. Chair shot. And I think that, yeah, that, that chair looks really dented out of place. And gut wrench, su overhead suplex. Pow, body slam into the top turnbuckle. Steve Roller dropped down. Steve Roller looking underneath the ring and grabs another chair. Chair. Grabs another chair. Looked like he was aiming for the demon racket doll, but didn't have a chance. And Wastelander puts the chair in the turnbuckle, I mean, table in the turnbuckle. Headbutt. And pump handle slam. Down goes the table. And reverse DDT onto the chair. And yeah, I don't think either one of these men are caring about. And knee strike. Snake eyes. And double leg takedown. Mounted punches. It looks like the Wastelander was determined to make Steve Roller bleed as well in this match. And leg Larry. Over and Steve Roller absorbed it and just delivered a clothesline over the top rope. And Demon just places Steve Roller on the ropes and back of a strike kick to the midsection. 
And a couple of elbow strikes. And made them drop down. Close line. And Steve Roller, what's he going to do? Snake eyes. Then Wastelander trying to wake himself up with a few taunts. And finally, someone picks up the ladder. But it's deep. A guy that we all hope never gets a championship here in CAW because it'll be under the jurisdiction of the SCP Foundation. DDT, Powerbomb. And Steve Roller just got up like he didn't even feel it. What the hell is Steve Roller made of? Tonka Steel? I mean, we all know those toys are built to last. Hence, Tonka Tough. And shoulder separator. And cracked in the face of the ship with the ladder and... Well, the ladder fell down as D picks up Rackadoll. Body slams into the turnbuckle and tossed aside like a bag of mushrooms. And D sets up the ladder. Wastelander back in the ring and the demon up. Kick, four, and over to the knee. And gut buster. Back elbow strike. And side slam. Kick to the chest. And the crowd really showing their disapproval of D71092. And I don't blame them honestly. And Steve Roller up. And what's D doing? Oh, fucking hell. A neck breaker from that position. And Roller grabs another chair. And a crack to the shoulder blades. Another crack with the chair. And looks like D stinking. Nope. Attempted discus clothesline, but blocked. And overhead, belly to belly suplex. And the demon has D on the shoulders and GTS go to sleep. And Wasteland is picked up and tossed to the side like a, well, bag of steel or something. I don't know. And the GTS. This could be the demon's chance to climb the ladder, but he's not interested. Looks like he wants to make the Wastelander bleed and he succeeds. The only one in this match not bleeding is Tonka Tough Steve Roller. And Demon Rackadoll finally climbs up the ladder. And looks like he's going to try to break the combination lock, but the Wastelander's right there stopping him. Forcing the Demon to let go. And holy shit, a power bomb right on the table. And Dee got hit with a back elbow strike. Kick to the side of the head. And right on the ropes. And Dee's trying to choke out the Wastelander. And lets him go. And Dee knocked down as Tonka Tough gets back in the ring. And he picks up the ladder. Back elbow strike and caught. And D got cracked in the head with that ladder. And Wastelander sets up the ladder in the middle of the ring. And now it punches and it looks like Steve Roller's going to try to take advantage and climb up the ladder. And he must be in a fair bit of pain because he was really gingerly climbing up there. And Rack put, pushes the ladder down and electric chair drop landing right on the table. And a clubbing blow to the back. And if one person in this match is not hurt, I don't know. Uh, you don't want to be here for the SCP Foundation. They are not really a good organization, also high run. Leg Larry. Punch to the midsection. Kick to the side of the head. Back elbow strike. And D reverse what Wastelander was thinking. And Steve Roller measuring up the Demon Racket Doll. And Steve Roller delivers a compact. And pump handle suplex. Running knee strike. And just delivering a couple of stomps. And Wastelander and Steve Roller are probably thinking ladder. But they both realise the other one's still up. Elbow strike, second elbow strike. 
and Dee's going to try to get the suitcase. And he's got it. And oh, he almost just broke another combo, another lock on the on it. And no, nope, did not do it. Yeah, he breaks one, and the other three don't seem to notice. Super kick, and the wastelander finally noticed as Dee broke a couple of locks. And one more lock left, and that's it. Match over. I have no idea what the hell he's going to do with that money because I'm pretty sure the SCP Foundation is going to take it off him. But bloody hell, what a match. That match was brutal from go to woe. I know I said I'd probably break in the two hour mark, but... Eh, what the hell. Because it's a holiday in a certain part of the world, I'm going to do two more matches. So now, it's time for the semi-main event. Let's spin the wheel and see who will make the deal. And the match is going to be, remember this one's for the lovely ladies, this match is going to be a... No chance not doing that, so spinning again. And this match is going to be a submissions only match. Well, that's going to be really interesting. Okay, so who on my female roster hasn't wrestled? I think the SCP Foundation has more than enough donuts. I mean, look at, just look at what they have locked up in there. And remember, this match is submissions only. That means the only way to win is to make your opponent tap out or scream the words, I quit. And in this match, we're going to have one half of the CAW Women's Tag Team Champions, the Light Ringer Little Pip, going up against Tammy Wicked. The following contest is your semi main event of the evening. And it is a submission only match. Introducing first, from Stable 2 in the Equestrian Wastelands, she is one half of the CAW Women's Tag Team Champions, the Lightbringer Little Pig. And her tag team partner, Blackjack, is going to be watching backstage. This is going to be a good match. I can feel it in my achy knee. Why do you think I'll wear a knee brace? Introducing her opponent from London, England. This is Tammy Wicked. And again, she breaks the she breaks the guitar. But well, I guess the good thing she provides her own guitars because fucking hell, that's a really expensive thing to do in your entrance. Yeah, in case her hairstyle didn't clue you in, she's actually a punk rock singer from the UK scene. 
Basically, you want punk music, you travel to London, England, because that's where it originated, from what I heard. Remember, the only way to win this match is to make your opponent submit. And Little Pip is the first ever Triple Crown Champion in CIW. Speaking of, Little Pip is ready. Tammy Wicked is ready. Right, ref, ring that bell. Let's do this, and I apologize again. I have to go use the announcer's room. Be right back. I'm back and I just saw a back elbow strike. And Iris whip to the turnbuckles. I mean, don't let little Pip size underestimate you. She's small, but she is strong and powerful. If you have not read the fan fiction full out of Questria, well, if you actually got a lot of hours on your side, read it. But if you don't, there's a lot of fanfic readings on YouTube. Just Look it up, it's a very well done story. And DDT. And Tammy gets up very quickly. Back elbow strike, second one. And a third one. Face burst. And little Pip picks up Tammy, but Tammy stepped back. Kick core and leg sweep take them. And little Pips climbing the top rope. She's basically telling Tammy Wicked to get up. And she overshot that missile drop kick. And leg sweep. And Tammy blocked it. On the shoulders, Tammy reverses. And double underhook, German suplex. Here, yeah, waste of time bridging because tag team move. Only submission moves, pinfall moves won't count. And a hurricanrana from the top rope. And face down, kick to the side of the head. Stomp missed that one. And a DDT. And Tammy Wicked climbing to the top rope. Stage dive. And stomping on Little Pip's arm. And looks like she's going to go for a double underhook submission combination. Is she going to make Little Pip tap out or pass out? And the ref's there making sure. And nope, Little Pip does not submit. And leg sweep takedown. And ripcord elbow strike. Little Pip picks Tammy Wicked up. Kick to the midsection. And drop the Mega Spell. 
Stomp on the out. Stomp on the lower back. And it looks like Little Pip is going to try to do a submission hold. Going into a modified camel clutch. Is she going to make Tammy Wicked submit? And she's really wrenching back. Nope. Tammy Wicked does not submit. Picks her up. And side slam. And again, Little Pip is measuring up Tammy Wicked. Kick caught, but Tammy Wicked saw it coming. Knee strike. Jawbreaker. And I think Tammy was going to try to do another submission hold, but Little Pip got up before she even could. And now going for a sub armbar submission hold. And no, Little Pip did not tap out. And Tammy Wicked climbing the top rope. Stage dive. And the crowd chanting one more time. I guess they love seeing the stage dive. And now going for that submission hold again. And Little Pip trying to fight out of it. And Little Pip had no choice. She just tapped out. Bloody hell, that was a good back and forth match from what I saw. Got to have a, have a look at the replays of that one. Stage dive. Drop the mega spell. And the side slam. The stage dive. Well, sometimes you have no choice. If you don't submit, you're going to uh, break something. And I think that's what Little Pip was thinking. She had no choice. She couldn't just have something broken because she still won half of the Tag Team Champions. Also, thank you for the follow, Gob Gobby. I didn't see that. But here is your winner, Tammy Wicked. And now we're coming down to the main event of the evening. It's a match that's only been done a couple of times in XPWL. And even then, they said they would not do it again because of how brutal it is. But first of all, spin the wheel! It's going to be a table match. And the reason why see, uh, XPWO has not been game to do this match again, it's because both competitors put each other on the injured list. I mean severe injured list. And it is a champion versus champion match. And no, not title for title. CAW has a rule of you can only have one championship. Means if you hold, just say, the super heavyweight title, you can't go for the tag team title. But now, the match that XPWL was only going to do twice. We're going to do it now. Once. It is going to be Violence versus Stone Cold True Blue. These two have damn near destroyed each other several times. And it took this long for Bush Ranger to put these two in a match. The following contest is your main event of the evening. It is a tables match. And champion versus champion. Introducing first. He is from Chroma City. He is the C.A.W. Super Heavyweight Champion. He goes under the monikers of Walking Armageddon. The Ultimate Hardcore. But he can legitimately call himself now the King of the Super Heavyweights. 
this is violence! And violence is a two belt guy. He holds the title here in CAW and he holds the XPWL World Heavyweight Champion. So, violence two belts, if you will. Now, we all know at CAW Combat Zone, Violence is going to be defending that championship if he is the champion at the time against Big Rig Dawson. Stone Cold True Blue is going to be defending his championship against the made man Tony Marone. And he does hit like a truck, I can tell you that through experience. And now introducing his opponent. From the Equestrian Outback. Now making his home in Ponyville. He is the CAW World Heavyweight Champion, Stone. Cold, true blue. Yeah, the reason why he called himself Stone Cold is because, well, Stone Cold Steve Austin is his wrestling idol. In fact, he told me backstage once that if it wasn't for Stone Cold Steve Austin, he probably would have given up being a wrestling fan after what happened at Back to the Beach 1996. And I remember that night. It's a night of infamy. But I'm glad Blue kept on with it. Okay, Violence is ready. Stone Cold Blue is ready. And there goes the bell. Now there is no ref. The only way to win this match is to physically slam your opponent through a table. And the announced table is also on the list of tables that can be slammed through. And Blue puts Violence into the turnbuckle. And now Blue is going to stump a mud hole and trot it dry. And picks him up and double axe handle. Stone Cold Blue, True Blue picks him up. Kick to the midsection and DDT. And slams Violance's arm down to the mat. Kick to the top of the head. Now as far as I remember, Violance has never defeated Stone Cold True Blue in a match. From the two times they fought each other, Blue came out victorious. Though it did cost them a little bit. Jawbreaker. And slams his leg down into the mat, kick core, and dragon screw leg whip. And Violence going some mounted punches. Neither one of these two have gone for the table yet. Ranger, you did tell these two it was a table match before they went out there, didn't you? Yeah, of course it did. What do you take me for? Yes, I did, Bruce, all right? Get off my back. And DDT. Kick, missed, and... And Stone Cold True Blue raining thunder from down under. He picks Violence up, and Stone Cold Stunner. And drop down onto the forehead. Looks like he was trying to make Violence bleed. And elbow strike to the forehead. Double axe handle again. And I think these two don't want to, don't, aren't worried about the ladder. I mean tables. And slams him into the mat. Stop and knee to the shoulders. And Violence got up like he didn't even feel it. Double chop. On the shoulders, elbow strike. Second elbow strike. Third elbow strike. Overhead punch, missed. And elbow strike. And a pile driver. This 
slides out and True Blue grabs the table slides it into the ring slap and table just went flying just punch to the arm and high angle spine buster picks him up kick to the midsection and True Blue again raining thunder from down under Oh, bloody hell, he missed. Probably hurt his elbow in the process. DDT. And Violence picks up the table. Cracks Blue of it once. And sets it up in the corner. And Violence picks Blue up. And picks him up. Elbow strike, second elbow strike. And another elbow strike. And True Blue, Irish whips into the, well, the table. And no! Looked like he was going to body slam him into the table, but Violent saw it coming and reversed it. And dragging True Blue to the ropes. And back body drop. If the table was there, he probably would have gone through it. And Blue picks Violent up. And Irish whip back into the ring. Quickly following him back in. The refs only there to ring the bell when the match is done. The match is not going to finish until someone is put through a table. And really wrenching back on the neck. And slams him down to the mat. And knee strike to the side of the head. And looks like Blue is thinking the other table. I mean, there's probably plenty more tables underneath the ring too. Slides it underneath and... Looks like Violence put his arm through it and True Blue realised he's probably broken, grab another one. And he grabbed another one! I was joking about that! Come on! And the crowd chanting, we want tables, we well, got tables. Three of them in the ring. And head first into the top turnbuckle. And Violence warming up his arm and hard clothesline. Looks like he was thinking collision, but Blue dropped down as Violence was trying to do that move. And high angle, power bomb. Stomp on the ankle. <coughs> Man, I'm broke dry. I need a drink. And modified figure four lock. And Violence picks up another table. And sets it up in the middle of the ring. Blue starts to stir. Violence picks Blue up. Kick to the midsection. And no nope, back body drop. And going for a standing mud hole stomp. And Violence up. And what is Blue thinking? He's dragging him. Elbow strike, second elbow strike, and another elbow strike. Whatever Blue was thinking, it doesn't matter now. And up on the shoulders. And, well, Blue's saving himself from going through the table, and the table drops. Elbow strike, second elbow strike, and another elbow strike. And collide. And Stone Cold Stunner! And Blue picks Violence up. And Irish whip into the turnbuckle. And the crowd chanting one more time. Knee strike, second knee strike, third knee strike. Talking trash and flings him out. And Blue sliding under the bottom rope. Is he going to go for another table? Because there's already three tables. Now there's going to be four tables in the ring. Only one of those tables <laughs> need to be broken for this match to be official. And there's already one set up in the corner. And Blue kicked to the midsection. And Violence grabs the table. And sets it up in the corner. And Irish whip to the turn to the table. And again Violence reverses. Kick to the back of the knee. These two are determined not to be put through the table. And shoulder tackle to the midsection. Stomp on the knee. Another stomp on the knee. And looks like Violence is going to stomp a mud hole. Then walk it dry. 
stomp on the knee. And elbow drop to the knee. A second one. Third one. Fourth one. Fifth. And Violence picks up another table. And he just realizes there's already a table set up there. And he sets it up in the middle of the ring. Man, table matches aren't really that exciting in my opinion, but this is a bloody good one. And that's it! Table broke! Bloody hell, that was a good back and forth match. I love seeing those. And taking a look at the replay, I'm surprised that Lightning didn't shoot up Blue's back with that one. And flings him to the side, and yep, there it is. The back, the backward suplex through the table. But let's get the official word. Here is your winner, Stone Cold True Blue. That was a good match. I can't deny that one. A really, really good match. But that's our show for tonight. Now before we go, we normally check to see if there's anyone injured, but we don't normally do that. But we're not going to do that tonight because this was not done in universe mode. So pretty much the only injury is that small stinger that Trixie suffered earlier in the ladder match. Well, thank you for watching. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. Have yourselves a good one and be safe in the world no matter where you happen to be.